Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. It's time to join the conversation. Let the bodies hear it. Your host at that. Bodies right, hold on. the floor. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> We're All professionals. Right. We're professionals, I promise oh, you. That's right. We're professional podcasters. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Hard Headed, episode <laughs> number 126. I'm your host, Matt Amos. With me, as always, Chet Sears and Troy Trussell. Today, we've got uh, what's on Chet's mind. We've got our top three Adam Sandler movies. And Troy is going to take us out with a good word. So let's start with Chet. This episode drops on uh, May 4th, which yeah. I know is your favorite holiday. Doesn't ring a bell. May the 4th be with you. The 4th be with you. Matt is such a... Uh, Hey, such a fan there there's some there's some kind of exciting stuff coming out with star wars no there's not i don't i don't know if there is uh the ahsoka series looks pretty good yeah i mean it's just too much there's too much star wars they they there's too uh, much too much marvel they just did back off and get some new ideas they did release like three new movies coming out i'm kind of excited about one of them but have you seen which one um, I can tell you which one I'm not excited about. The Ridley? Yeah. The Daisy? The Daisy Ridley being a Jedi one? Yeah. Not too excited about that one. Yeah. But. I don't know. It's just, there's just too much going on. I don't, I don't have time for Star Wars anymore. Yeah, I don't. It's not that interesting. It's diluted. It has been diluted. If I didn't have a 10 year old that really liked it, I probably wouldn't even yeah. kept watching The Mandalorian. Yeah. Honestly. I will tell you what is better than anything Star Wars coming out. And that is the Indian Superman. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. I'm sorry, what? You have a video? Yes. Oh. This. We're, we're about to watch something. This yeah. is old. It's already been out. This is better than But anything. it's a knockoff from. Oh. No, that's digital. What is happening? Oh, it's Superman. Is yeah, that I mean, Spider Woman? Yeah. So That's pretty good. He's fighting them all with a finger. I'm sorry, listeners on the podcast. Matt's showing us some <laughs> some uh, Bollywood. Either way, it's Bollywood video. That's better than anything Star Wars has ever done. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and if you'd like to see that video, go to Facebook and just type in Indian Superman and click on any of the videos. Okay. I'm not going to do that. I yeah, you already saw it, so you know enough. you know the greatness. I saw all I needed to see. So we do a minor, by we, I mean me and Troy, uh, do a minor, Troy and I, do a, a minor okay. preparation for podcasting. And sometimes we give each other a heads up of what we were wanting to talk about so that you could either be thinking about it or have a point of view ahead of time. So Why did you leave me out? The, you don't prepare. You don't prepare. Sure, you don't. So, look at those notes. Okay. You jot normally pair, don't prepare. Jot down some ideas. So, um, occasionally. For my what's on my mind segment for this, the, the <laughs> statement that I made is the question that I now pose to you. Um, how many dead bodies are you willing to step over to reach your goal? Matt? Depends on where I'm at. And what you're doing. And what I'm doing. But if I'm in the Marine, I'm stepping over all of them. Are you going to create them and then step over them to get to your objective? Yes. What if, what if it wasn't military? I'm not then, a Marine. Then why would there be dead bodies? Let's talk about climbing Mount Everest. Okay. I think we need to stop. By we, I'm never going to do it. But did you know? But there have been over 300 people that have died attempting to climb Mount Everest and they leave the bodies because it's too labor intensive to take them down. They actually have some of the bodies are, are like markers like, oh, we ought to be able to make it to green boots by 10 a.m. Because <laughs> he's a dead popsicle in the along the trail <laughs> did you guys know this hey yeah. it, isn't it true that most people die on the way back down i don't know i heard that they a lot of people die and 
uh, most of it's because of an oxygen situation. Yeah, and or, there's only a certain window of time that you can reach the peak. Yeah, as long as the weather's good. It, it, yeah. yeah, there's a season for it. There's all kinds of stuff that are factored right. into it. Yeah, but haven't we done enough? Like, haven't we climbed enough to just say, okay, all right, people made it to the top. And they're dying doing it, and you're stepping over their bodies to try to say that you did it. But it's just enough already. Have you seen some of the pictures of what it looks like to climb Everest today? Terrible. I, I want to apologize again to our listeners. Lines, just lines of people. <laughs> lines, if you're, if you're lines just of people, if you're not on YouTube, if you're just listening aud- audibly, they're just stacked up all the way up the slope. Like, what? What's the point? And and you're going to become a dead body while doing that? Statistically, one in 30 is going to die, and they're going to leave you there, and then somebody else is just going to step over you to go do, go do it again? Like, this, is, this just needs to stop. Why can't you just go do something else that's hard instead of this? There's other hard things to do. So... Yeah, go rock climbing. I watched a documentary on the earthquake that hit Everest, and or Nepal, really. It didn't hit it, just Everest. And that got me thinking, like, why are people still doing this? And, oh, because it's there. Yeah, for the first 50 people. But now you're like, if you have money and nothing better to do, might as well just go do this so I could write a book and try to get wealthy that way or get more money that way or to go be a speaker on the national circuit that way. But you're literally crawling over dead bodies to do it. And I think, yeah, I'm okay if not another person climbs Mount Everest ever again. All right. What do you guys think about that? I could care less one way or the other. So you're, you're cool with people. That's fine. They died doing it. That's, don't pull them off a the mountain. It's good. They just died. We'll just call them. Green Boots is a guy, by the way. People stop and take selfies next to Green Boot. Actually, <laughs> the last big storm that came through like blew him off the wherever. But they I, they they literally they, they have names and they no they don't use their real names. They just I think it's unfortunate that the the bodies are left there and that there's no attempt to go get the bodies off the mountain by anyone. But there's also the case that hey they chose to go do that. What other sport? Do we partake in where it's just like, oh yeah, you died. We're going to keep doing it anyway. Mountain or uh, rock climbing. Yeah. Free, we're doing that too. Free rain or whatever you call it. But you kind of like free solo for free, yeah. free, free climbing, no ropes, but they, they at least haul your body off after that. Cause you, you know, or parts of it. Well, sometimes they don't find them like, like the free solo guy. They finally found him. They've got avalanched in. Yeah. But I don't think they ever went God's body, or they never said they did. But I, uh, as far as Everest is concerned, I don't care. I've had. But is it that big a deal anymore? I, no, I agree with you. I don't think it's that big of a deal anymore. Like, so why? There's so many people that have done it. But it's like, I think it's more of a if they can do it, I can do it, and it'll make me feel awesome too. Yeah, why don't you go like, uh, I don't know. I mean, hike the Pacific Rim Trail or something. The, the just what's the what's the point like i don't get it it's not enough danger in that shit climb the highest mountain on earth i mean why not because you're crawling over dead people to do it and you're paying uh, uh, charters to uh, like really did you do that like did did somebody not wake you up out of your tent every morning and then tell you exactly how to put your crampons on and tell you exactly where to step and go out and put the ladders I mean, there in front of you i'm and, not saying I, it's not like i don't think it's not fashionable i think people are doing it because it's like the cool thing to do right now you know but and has been the cool thing to do but you look at the sherpas who do it every day yeah you know what i mean like it's 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 like like, the most elite touristy industry thing that exists and you're crawling over dead bodies while you're doing it that just gives me the heebie-jeebies i mean i've got a couple of buddies that have have made the summit, you know, one was a, a baloney amputee. And then you got the, uh, Oh, can't remember who that, who that guy was, but he was a double, um, baloney amputee that, that made the summit. Um, 
And so I, th- I, th- I think it's along the lines of, you know, people entering like the, uh, triathlons or whatever, you know, it's just a, a, yeah, but go do that. It's a feat, you know, can I, can I do it? Can I survive it? It's a dare. It's like they're, that's their self dare. That's their goal. That's what they want to do. Whatever. Go do I'm it. just saying, find a different goal. I'm not saying don't have a goal, but let's, uh, have you seen all the trash that they leave up there? No, I mean, I don't, Oxygen I'm, models. Not, I'm not mountain climbing has never been my thing. Well, I, I like to go hiking in the mountains, but they, I don't, they don't practice leave no trace. I'll tell you that. Well, I, yeah, I, I mean, I, it is a, it's the Disney so. world of the elite for the most part. Uh. Like getting, get in line, <laughs> line up. I mean, it's still, I mean, it's still a a huge challenge. I mean, I, I get the effort that's got to be put in, the amount of training that you have to do to be able to go do it. Swim across the Pacific. Like, that's a challenge, too. Swim from Alcatraz. See if you can make it. Yeah. Sucker. Well, maybe that's one of the next, <laughs> the next maybe they're not swimmers. Not they, the like, they like the land. I don't, I don't know. I just want to climb. Yeah, I just I'm I don't, I'm not a But I get it. I mean, you're not you're not the first person that's done it. You're not the hundredth person that's done it. You're not the thousandth part of this person you're, that's you're done not it. You're not the you're not the trailblazer that's putting those ropes in for the first time. I mean, you're you're putting, you know, you're you're walking over ladders that have been put there for you and all that. I you know, I get it. You know, but for some people that's their that's their Everest. We'll go do K2. It's harder. Most of those people do. No. No. <laughs> they don't i mean um, what's the what's the other one um kilimanjaro i know yeah kilimanjaro tons <laughs> of people walked up kilimanjaro <laughs> yeah oh, that's what that's one you ought to do because now nobody's dying doing that one well, i'm sure there has been yeah and uh, freak I, accidents i may be the first yeah well if you are the whole, i will go pull your body down man. Will, will you i'm not gonna let you walk gonna over your You're dead body walk over me I'm not going to let him walk over your dead body on the way to, to get to Kilimanjaro. I mean, Love it. I really thought that this, you know, when you, when you brought this up as a topic <laughs> of discussion, I thought this was going to be like a really good, like uh, corporate motivational speech. You could have taken this so far because that <laughs> title is the perfect title for a corporate event and then you went with Everest. So maybe you should tie this in together with um, people climbing the corporate mountain. And how many dead bodies are you willing to walk over to get to your role in this company? That might be a good one for you, Chet. Yeah. I think, I, th- I think that title is one of the best titles that I have ever heard. Maybe if, I'll it, write a book. Copyright. It, copyright that book. Title. Copyright that book right now. How many dead bodies are you willing to walk over to yeah. reach your goal? So roughly. And then make it a whole book about not reaching any goals. <laughs> just not doing it at all. <laughs> roughly 30,000 people climb Mount Kilimanjaro every year. How many? 30,000 Kilimanjaro. Oh my gosh. And there are about three fatalities a year. So. Wow. What about Everest? Let's see here. Let the I saved some the of that. <laughs> That's really offensive to green boots. Yeah. I'm sorry, green boots. I apologize. Yeah, Troy. That's I'm insensitive. Old, but I mean, you know, old man, green boots. Green boots. I mean, he he knew the risk he was taking. So, and, uh, but it makes for really gripping TV because people are out there doing something and you're not. And so it makes you feel better about yourself. To yeah, watch, three to watch them succeed and get behind them and three hundred and ten and eleven thousand successful summits. Mm. Three hundred so, three hundred and ten deaths and eleven thousand summits. I'm sorry, but that's only six thousand people because a lot of those making multiples like the Sherpas. So a three percent death rate. It's just simply too hard to remove it. Um, no, you make it. You make it. You do the hard things. If you're if you're 
going to climb Everest, you're going to say, hey, I'm going to go up there and bring back one of the dead bodies and bury them. Like, everybody's doing harder things today than we did back then. So start bringing them down. And then I want You want a all, real challenge, bring them down. Yeah. Yeah. Be the first person on earth to bring down a dead body from the summit of Everest. I'll podcast about that. That's something. That's something special. You did something. You made it. Di- you made good. a difference. Now, see my buddy um, that went over and 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 eventually summited. Um, he had to go three times to get it with the weather right, and so to get in line from behind the two hundred people in front of him. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I can't remember. Pretty soon they're going like, oh, <laughs> queue's full. <laughs> Come back next year. <laughs> Pretty soon they'll have an escalator. Yeah. So I can't remember the order in which it happened but the first year i believe there was an avalanche and um so that he couldn't he couldn't climb and then um assisted with the rescue efforts for the people that were there and then the second time was that earthquake Mm -hmm. and couldn't summit so he ended up helping with rescue operations evacuating people from that was brutal by the way digging people out from that um, and then his third time, he finally summited. But he's doing all that as a baloney amputee, you know, Marine veteran. And I think he was the first amputee, veteran amputee to summit. Yeah. You know, so now, of course, you get all these classifications. The first right. veteran amputee, not, you know. Veteran, you know, veteran baloney amputee, veteran above, above the amputee. Yeah. So, veteran, I mean, you know, bilateral amputee. But, I mean, when you're talking, you know, however, however many people have summited, 6,000 people. Yeah that's still a small number in comparison to that mountain's been there forever. So in the course of human history, only 5,000, 6,000 people summited. It's still something pretty special. But it gets less special every day. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it's yeah. Every time, especially now with it being so commercialized, commercialized and, and documentaries being done and TV shows being, dedicated to climbing Everest, you know, they're just playing on the drama and then it just gets less special every time you see it and it gets circulated. But yeah, but to uh, that person climbing, it's, it's special to them may not be as special to me, but that's their personal goal and they've reached their goal and they've, they've accomplished something. If, cool. if your motivation was that, but some of them are just like, Oh, I, I climbed Everest. Like, so I was walking and watching a documentary about the, uh, about the earthquake and like there was a dude talking about it in a testimonial for the documentary like uh, okay but are we still climbing like i know that rocks just avalanche down here and smash people while they're still in their tents but i paid good money to to summit and the weather looks good today so let's let's get rolling folks and like well dude then i imagine that's a lot of the people that, that do this not everybody not everybody but i mean that guy's got a goal they're already dead. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's not like all green boots. <laughs> There's green boots right there. Oh man. Frozen, yeah. frozen to a crisp. And people just sit there and like, Oh, selfie with green boots. Hey, when did green oh. boots, uh, keel over right there? Years ago. It's been a while. Yeah. Man. Old green boots. Yeah. I don't know. I'll all right. tell you later. Anyway, we're going to take a break. Head on to our top three. I think it'd be a good idea. (laughs) Are you driving traffic to your website? Do you have an engaging homepage? Better yet, does your homepage have a video? We recently created a video for a client about his business and the services they provide. Since he placed the video on the homepage of their website, he has had a number of clients specifically say they decided to use his services because of that video. At Trussell Media, we help businesses create engaging videos to host on their websites, email to clients, and use in their social media marketing. Contact us if you're interested in creating a video for your homepage today, trusselmedia.com. Fill out the form at trusselmedia.com slash contact. Let us help you tell your story through video. All right, and we're back with our top three. <laughs> and we're back. Adam Sandler movies. I think Troy should go first. I will. Uh, Man, I've got a lot of 
uh, dead bodies that you can hop over to get to, to this. Get to this. Uh, a lot of honorable mentions here. There's a lot of good, good uh, Adam Sandler movies out there. Well, that's uh, that's all well and good, but I'm giving you your top three. Right. I'm going to give you my top three, Mr. Amos. Uh, and I went with not just Happy Madison Productions. It was like he he was an actor in the movies that are yeah now. that would be an so, adam sandler movie just like uh a, a, a Dwayne the rock johnson movie it wouldn't be his production company right it's just who's he's in it right yeah. well he he has he has scripted a lot of them that yeah. he's that he's not in as well so you really could, yeah you could count that as an adam sandler movie okay yeah he's written a lot of movies yeah, yeah. really that he hasn't been in yep oh yeah because that dude is written all he's been in a lot of movies well he's been in a lot of them too yeah, yeah. He's got a lot so, of time on his hands, I guess. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, my number three is Hustle. New one. one Rel- relatively new. Good movie. Rel- really good movie. Relatively new movie. But yeah, he he's not as... Uh, he's playing a serious character, basically. Yeah. It was a really good performance by him and really, really good movie. So if you hadn't seen it... Check that one out. It's check, good. Check it's it worth... Out. It's really good. It's worth it. Uh, Number two, Happy Gilmore. Classic Adam Sandler. Uh, Old Chubbs, one of my favorites. Uh, (laughs) Speaking of dead bodies, Old Chubbs. (laughs) This one's for you, Chubbs. This one's for you, Chubbs. (laughs) All right. And then uh, another classic, my number one, Billy Madison. By far my favorite Adam Sandler movie. I mean, the whole movie's quotable. Just line after line. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's some really good stuff in that movie. So, yeah, that's probably my favorite Adam Sandler movie, Billy Madison. Billy Mad. Yeah. Chet, what do you got? Number three, Murder Mystery 2. Haven't seen either one of those. Murder Mystery 1 was really good. It, Murder Mystery 2 is better. Is it? Oh, my god! I started watching it, and I fell asleep, and I was like, because I really wanted to watch it because yeah. it just came out. Yeah. Yeah. It. Ash and I watched this the other day, and at some point in there, we were both just rolling, laughing out loud. <laughs> it was like, oh, my gosh, this kid. I can't remember the last time we've laughed at a movie that hard. It That's was good. I'll it was check fun. it out. Um, number two. Water boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Water boy. <laughs> That's a good one. They did a good job. Kathy Bates on record. She nailed the Louisiana accent, the Cajun accent, oh, in my yeah. opinion, in that movie. And so did the overall wearing coach. I know people that talk like that. So, um, <laughs> yeah, good job. Good job with uh, some historical accuracy or cultural accuracy with that. Yep. Uh, number one, happy Gilmore. Just, uh, I mean, it's fantastic movie, and still today, uh, the Robert, uh, who's the who's the guy that played Shooter? Oh <laughs> yeah, I know you're talking about Downey Jr. No, 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 it wasn't Downey Jr. I'll, uh, I'll look it up. Okay. Anyway, that dude still goes after uh, Shooter McGavin. Twitter, he's on Twitter doing Shooter McGavin stuff. Uh, still to this day, it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, Shooter. Christopher McDonald. Christopher McDonald. Just just fantastic. <laughs> Great movie. Bob Barker getting involved. Um, <laughs> Carl I don't know how many times I used to quote that. Yeah. The price is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he got him to do that that early. Yeah. And uh in in gonna have to hit it career. off Frankenstein's fat foot. <laughs> Uh, that dude played Jaws and James Bond. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, that's anyway, awesome. that's my number one. I've got a. I've got an honorable mention too, but I'll wait. <laughs> All right, uh, number three. <laughs> Just go with it. Oh, that's another one I haven't seen. Really? Oh, it's so good. Adam Sandler, Jennifer Aniston. Um, I think they just they work really well together. He uh, works really well with a lot of female. He, he does. Drew Barrymore. He's it, good with her. In yeah. Movies yeah. And, yeah. And. Uh, they're it, it, it's so funny because he's 
It's just, it's just a really, you have to watch it. It's, it's a funny movie. Yeah. It's, it's well worth it. Speaking of, they just, he just had the, he won the Mark Twain award uh, about yeah. a month ago. Nice. And they did, I mean, his friends and his friends are all in the movie, his movies. Right. So, Oh yeah. Rob Snyder spoke, uh, Steve Buscemi spoke, uh, Chris Rock spoke, Kevin James, uh, Drew and Jennifer spoke together. And they were one up in each other's movies, each of their roles that they oh, had. Yeah. And, and, uh, it, it was hilarious. And Bushimi, I think it was him. Yeah. Was like, uh, why, why haven't I filmed on a really good location? Like I, all the movies you've had me in, <laughs> none of them were in Hawaii or Italy or he was pretty funny with that. And he's like, it's about well, time. But, but he did it as the drunk guy from the wedding singer. Yeah. That's how he was trying to, yeah. it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> I had to go. Is it on YouTube or something? Yeah. Yeah. You, you can see it on Each of them have their own little segment. I'll have on to YouTube. go watch this. That's and I think funny. Steve Buscemi's hilarious. I yeah. just, oh, he, he he's funny. Yeah. Even in, uh, and I'm glad I called Desperado. that guy. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Desperado, oh, yeah, but you know, he, yep. he's funny. It not been, it's, it's kind of a serious role, but he's funny in that. Um, number two, blended, um, with Drew Barrymore. Oh, that's a really good one. Yeah. Um, I, that movie, I don't know what it is. That movie cracks me up Yeah, from Shaquille, Shaquille O'Neal being in there yep. and just that dude, he's funny, <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, yeah, those two just work really well together. And that leads to the number one, uh, with the wedding singer. And that's, yeah. that's probably my, I've watched that more times probably than any other. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Especially when he gets up there and he, he flips out and does the love stinks and then goes around the room. And that just, that's the funniest thing to me. <laughs> that's good. So honorable mentions, I've got 50 first dates. That was good. I, that, I did like that movie. That and the Sean Astin character in that movie, that dude cracks me up in that movie. Yeah, he's just, he's good. so funny. I had uh Pixels. Did y'all ever see that one? Yeah. That was good. Uh The Cobbler. Oh, I know that one. I haven't seen it. That was pretty good. He was kind of playing a different character and that one was really good. I also had Blended and uh what? Zohan. Zohan. Don't mess with the Zohan. Don't, don't oh. mess with the Zohan. That one's funny. That one's pretty funny. That had Mr. Deeds too. That's a good one. Sneaky sneaky. Yeah, I liked, uh, I mean, honorable mentions, Big Daddy. Um, ah, is, that's his worst one. I, th- I thought there's still some parts in there. on my nerves. Yeah. Pretty funny. Um, uh, little Nicky was pretty bad. Yeah, that's true. That was pretty bad. <laughs> that's true. Um, and then uh, the one that surprised you, and it's it's dark, is Uncut Gems. Yeah. That one surprises you. Right, it I, is I not know. what why, you, why didn't he get an Oscar for that? Yeah, I, there was a big ruckus about all that. I don't know, but the end of that movie was. I don't say I haven't. I haven't watched it. It. That's one. It I is not watched. what you expect. So it, it breaks out into a musical. No, <laughs> Shut I up, wouldn't shit. expect that. <laughs> See, but you expected it, so that's not what's going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, that that movie is. Speaking of musicals, that, that may be one. That may be one of his best movies. Well, yeah, it's it's been, yeah, said that that was critically best, acclaimed. Critically acclaimed, his best performance ever, and he should have gotten an Oscar for that year. Yeah. A lot of people came out and spoke about. I didn't. That. I didn't know that. I I just was scrolling by and looking at Adam Sandler movies, and I was oh, well, I've never seen that one. I watched that one, and yeah. Speaking of uh, the Mark Twain Award, the the girl that sang in Frozen, Isla Mendel, yeah, uh, Elsa. She, Elsa, well, yeah. Is, yeah. is her name Isla? Something like that? Something I have Mendel. no idea. But. She, uh, she did Opera Man at the Mark Train Awards <laughs> oh, and had nice. a whole write-up where she was singing, and they had like a choir come out with her and support. It was, I'm telling you, I, I, that, that, was a good, that was a good time. I'll have to watch that. Yep. yep. All, All right. right. Good top three. Thank you, gentlemen, for being prepared with your Adam Sandler movies. Like, that was real hard. And uh, moving on to a good word, Troy. Yeah, so I've recently been catching up on uh, The Chosen, season three. Oh, uh, yes. I haven't gotten through all of it, but it's really good. And uh, just some of the, the the way they portray it, I still... I started that yesterday. It's Man, it's fantastic. I love it. But specifically, uh, they uh, have a scene out of Luke 4 
where Jesus goes back to his hometown and he goes into the synagogue and they ask him to read the scripture and it's uh, he un- unrolls the scroll and he finds uh, Isaiah and he reads from Isaiah 61. And what he reads is, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to, pro- to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so then he rolls up the scroll and he gives it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him and he began to say to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfill, fulfilled in your hearing. And so at that, he was claiming to, to be the Messiah. And I had to go back and read this in Luke 4 because the because when you watch The Chosen, you, they're taking liberties to, to tell a good story, but but they're telling it in, in such a way that it, it, it just really good pulls out things it or it helps me see things that I wouldn't pull out from my own reading of it if I wasn't really diving in deep. So it the show has caused me to go back in and read and and dig a little deeper, which which is good. Um but yeah, so he is claiming to, to be the Messiah and then in the show they they at the end of this I'll say in uh So verse 28, when they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath. So they got angry because like Chet was saying before the Sanhedrin, they didn't like a a new king coming in in the town. That's not the one where they started tearing their garments, is it? Um, Well, no, they they got him and they dragged him out to to the cliff. And they were saying, hey, because you claim to be God we don't have to take this to anybody. We can just kill you right now and throw you off the cliff. And that's what it's saying here. They rose up and drove him out of the town and brought him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built so that they could throw him down off the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. And the way that he passes through their midst in the show is just fantastic. I won't ruin it for anybody who hadn't watched it. But Yeah, not today. <laughs> not today, Satan. <laughs> he doesn't say that, but... But he slips through, and it's pretty awesome. And I guess the good word for today is just Messiah. Jesus is the king. He was the Messiah that came to to set us all free. And, uh, yeah, if you haven't watched The Chosen, check it out. And if you got a question about it, man, just dig into the Bible because uh, it it's the true word. And if you need to hear from the Lord and you're not hearing from him in your heart, he gave us his word to speak to us, so get to reading it. Yeah, that's it. All right. Wonderful advice. I think I did get up to that. That's where I left off was when they were getting ready to throw him off the cliff. And uh, that's basically what he says is not today. Yeah, pretty much. Like, this is not happening today. And then... <laughs> And I do love the after after he walks through, he just kind of smiles. It's it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for ruining it, Matt. Spoiler alert! I was trying to leave it. You know, oh, that's so not that much. That's not it. that much. Though I mean, if you read the Bible, you already know what's going to happen. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet. Please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.